On the bench today, I have an old Astron RS20 power supply. I picked this thing up at a flea market over a year ago, and I'm just now getting around to turning it on and trying it out to see if it works. And of course, it doesn't. So I'll show you guys what's going on with this power supply and exactly kind of what it's doing, and then we'll try and fix it. But before I do that, I just want to mention that I'm not a professional, so anything that I show in this video is for entertainment purposes only. If you're going to work on something like this yourself, make sure you get help from a professional before you do. Now that that's out of the way, I'll bring the camera in closer and I'll show you guys what's going on. I've got the power supply plugged into the AC mains and I've got my voltmeter here hooked up to the output of the power supply on the back. So if I flip the switch, you can see that the light comes on, but there's no voltage coming out of the power supply. And in fact, if I let go of the switch, you can see it immediately kind of goes back to off. So I'm going to unplug this from the AC mains and then pull the cover off and we'll see what's going on inside. Before I pull the cover off, I decided to take a quick look at the main fuse just to make sure it wasn't blown. Although, because I was getting kind of light on the switch when I turned it on, I figured it wasn't. But, good to check anyway. So since the switch seems to be compromised, let's pull it out of here and get a closer look. Now on the top, there are two spade lugs that I can remove, but on the bottom, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, this wire is soldered onto this tab, so I'm going to have to fire up the soldering iron to get that one off. And I'm not so sure this matters, but I'm going to label these so that when I put them back, I put them on the right lugs. Now that the wires are removed, I can pop this out of the front panel. You can see there's sort of clips on the top and the bottom of the switch that I need to squeeze, and then I can push this thing out through the opening in the front. Now these things are generally kind of hard to squeeze, so I'm going to use a screwdriver to kind of help push on those as I push from the back <laughs> once this tab cools off and I don't burn my finger again. I'm having trouble getting this switch out of here, and since we know it's kind of no good anyway because it won't stay on, I'm just going to cut these tabs. You can kind of see how it's designed to kind of fit into the panel and clip in in this direction. And theoretically, if you squeeze it and push the switch, it should come back out. But now if I turn the switch and we kind of look at it from this angle, you can see it also has an angle to keep it engaged with the slot sort of at the top. So you can push on the tab, but it's still locked in here. So these things are made to kind of go in and never come out. So here's a quick look at the old switch. As we saw earlier, this thing just doesn't stay engaged, so I think it's just broken inside. But we'll use the multimeter to confirm that. So I've got the meter leads set up across pins 1 and 2, and right now in the off position, the switch shows open, which is what we would expect. When I toggle it to on, even though it doesn't stay on, the meter should show basically a short. So I'll kind of actuate this now and we'll see what happens. Now, you can see if I press it and even hold it as hard as I can, nothing is happening. So, that pretty much indicates this switch is bad. Now, let's take a look at another almost identical switch that I happen to have here that I pulled out of a functioning Astron power supply. In the off position, we have the open, and if I toggle the switch on, you can see we go down to 0.3 ohms, which is what we would expect. So here's the two switches, the good one and the bad one, side by side. And hopefully if I get this kind of spun right, and you can see in the light, that these are both Carling branded switches, and they are both rated for 16 amps at 125 volts. Now there isn't an exact part number on here, but at this point I could go online and try and do some research to find a suitable replacement switch. But I happen to have a collection of switches here in my junk box, if you want to call it that. And I found one here that should work. Now there's no brand name on this switch, so it's probably made in China. And if we look at the side here, we can see that it's rated at 15 amps at 125 volts AC. So just a little bit less than the original Carling. But if we flip it over, I can see that it is sort of a switch with a neon lamp inside. And pins 2 and 3 here are switched. 
So I think this is going to work in the power supply and save me the wait time and expense of having to order a new one. And then just to double check the size, we'll kind of put them side by side and they pretty much look like the same thing except that the tabs on this one are a little bit less aggressive, I'll call it, than the original Carling. So this may not sit in the front panel quite as tightly as the Carling, but I think it'll work. So just to make sure the switch is good before I go through the trouble of putting it in the power supply, let's check it with the meter. In the off position, we get open, and if I flip it over to the on position, we get a short. Now if I move the other probe over to the third pin on the switch, you can see that we're now getting about 4.5 K ohms of resistance instead of an open like we were on the original Carling. So that is a bit of a difference, but it's basically a difference with that neon bulb that's in the switch. This one's probably just not as good as what Carling provides in their switch. But I think we're okay nonetheless. I'm gonna test this out in the power supply and see if it works. So I've got my new switch here. I'm just gonna rest it inside the cutout on the front panel just for convenience sake. I'm going to bring in this wire that was soldered on the original and solder it back to this tab. I looked around in my junk box to see if I had any more of these spade terminals that I could crimp on this open wire. I don't, so I'm just going to solder this like the original was. To make it a little easier to solder the wire on, I'm going to pre-tin this lug. I'll bring this back in, rest it lightly so that it doesn't snap into place. And we'll get this wire soldered on. Now I can bring in the other wires and connect those onto the lugs. Now that everything is connected up with the switch, I've got the meter connected up to the output of the power supply and set to the DC volt setting. I've got the power supply plugged into AC mains. We're ready to flip this switch for the first time and see what happens. Interestingly enough, we are now getting 13 0.8 volts on the output of the power supply. I don't know if you guys caught it on the camera or not because the angle wasn't quite good But when I flipped on that switch the neon bulb that's inside Came on really bright for about a millisecond and then burned itself out So whatever that bulb was that was in there really wasn't rated for 120 volts AC or maybe it was just it's time to go who knows how long this thing's been sitting in my junk box either way we now seem to have a functional switch that can turn the power supply on and off. Now, of course, when I turn it off, we still get sort of a voltage there for a little while, and then it sort of collapses as the capacitors discharge. But if I turn it back on, you can see it comes right back up to 13.8. Turn it off, wait a second, voltage drops. So I think we're good to go. So we saw on the meter that the power supply is providing 13.8 volts. So it looks like it's working. But to verify that, I wanted to set up sort of a load test so that we can determine whether or not the power supply is able to supply current to a device, power it up properly, and allow it to operate. So for the test, I've set up an old Kenwood ham radio dual band transceiver. And I've got that connected up to an RF power meter with a dummy load on the back. This way here, we can key the radio up, which should cause it to draw 5, 6, maybe 7 amps out of the power supply. And we'll use the RF power meter to determine if the radio is putting out the wattage that we expect. If that all works properly, then I think that means the power supply is ready to be put back in service. Now these things aren't known to be real accurate, but you can see I've got a power meter back here. Right now it's reading 13.5 volts, so a little bit less than what the meter was telling us, and I trust my meter a little bit more than this thing, but it'll at least give us an idea of kind of what's going on here. Now let's turn the radio on and see how much power it draws. So with the radio on in receive mode, you can see we're drawing about 6 watts or so. If we wait for this display to cycle through, you can see that we are drawing roughly about half an amp or so. If I key the radio up in low power mode, let's see what we get. You can see we're putting out about five watts according to the RF meter, and we're now drawing about 30 watts out of the power supply from back here. And again, if we wait for this to cycle through, you can see we're drawing about two and a half amps. If we kick this up to high power and key up, you can see the radio is putting out about 20 watts or so, 
on the meter we're drawing about 57 watts and again if we wait for this to cycle through we're now drawing about 4.75 amps as you saw the power supply seems to be working fine now I'm gonna leave it here set up in receive mode for a few hours make sure nothing heats up or kinda of goes wrong but I don't expect it to I think this power supply is more or less ready to be put back into normal service I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.